I would think that this presents an interesting time for, for you and your company because, like you said, we don't really know the full extent of what we're going to come out of COVID into in terms of properties being vacant. And for neighborly, that seems like on the surface to be a really good opportunity. You can't necessarily take advantage or capitalize on that just yet because public gatherings are still really not allowed or and you know no one's not not many people I would say are seeking that out but on the other side of that do you look at this as something where you're going to jump as as the opportunity arises or like how do you approach this kind of conundrum yeah absolutely really good question so I think like every small business in the world but specifically for this podcast uh, in the United States we have been through the ringer we got knocked out we had eight locations, leases. When the pandemic hit, of course, we got banned from operating. And we are still more or less currently banned from operating at this point in February 2021. So it's almost been a full year without the ability to run our business. Uh, and we're a really small business. And I think what every small business entrepreneur has had to confront is the duality of, of this situation in the sense that with every wildfire or forest fire, which is what this is for small business, there is a very ripe future with fresh soil and ingredients and the ability to basically rebirth a new version of that forest. And that's what we're seeing, I think. And, and, and to look at, there's two ways to look at that wildfire of COVID-19 is like, it's the end or it's the beginning. And it's certainly hard to look at it when it's burning to say, I can see the other side of it. And that was, I think, the hardest psychological part of last year for any retailer or small businesses is keeping the faith, right? And keeping your psychology trained on the fact that this is not permanent and there will be an end. And you will survive. Your business will, will, can survive if you, if you, you might have to make some drastic moves. You might have to lose everything like, like we did. We lost all of our locations all eight of them. We were in Sacramento, Los Angeles, Portland, Oregon, San Jose, San Francisco, Oakland, Berkeley. We lost every single one of our eight locations pretty much overnight because we were leasing those locations. And that's three and a half years of hard work and money totally down the drain. We had to lay off the majority of our staff. So it was complete destruction for us. And like every other business who does, you know, in real life, physical uh, operations and when that was all done, I sat back and looked at it and I'm like, this is either the most depressing thing that has happened to me in a long time, professionally, or there's an opportunity in here that could be much bigger than anything we were able to access before coronavirus. And I trained my brain and kind of our team's energy and culture around the fact that whatever has happened has happened. It's in the past, it's done. What now? What's possible going forward from this? And how can we make ourselves better as a team? How can we make a better company? How can we provide a better service for people coming out of this? Because what we are offering is going to be more in demand than ever before when this is over. Our goal is to survive long enough to see that through. And in the meantime, it's triaging what you have to do to, to, to literally stay solvent. We flirted with insolvency multiple times found our way through that financially and barely scraped by and and we're in an okay place now to, to keep going but that was that's obviously every business's first order of operations get your finances straight do whatever it takes to pull through this thing financially so that you can start to plan what the other side looks like and we did that thankfully with support from the government of course ppp sba supremely thankful for our country actually in this time and, and there's a lot of ways to look at the failures of government or the confusion of government but i would say that regardless we pulled together pretty strong as a, as a country and supported people as much as we could and it certainly helped us get through that so on the other side to answer kind of the silver lining we saw that a there would be an incredible amount of supply that we could acquire there would be b whole host of new landlords and REITs and operators who would be interested in new models of business. And then C, there's an entire new generation of customers, of users, of people who can create things in our communities 
that are just waiting to rebirth themselves as well and are going to need a new system in which to do that. So if we compare all three of those opportunities together, access the supply, build new landlord partnerships, and then redesign our offerings to better suit the post pandemic economy, then we could potentially find a much brighter future for ourselves after this. And that's, that was the way that we approached it throughout 2020. And even still now, we're, we're still not out of the, the woods yet, but we're close. Weirdly enough, it's been one of the worst things that's happened to us and the best thing that's happened to us at the same exact time. And, and there are a lot of entrepreneurs who I think could say the same thing because it's forced us as entrepreneurs, especially physical entrepreneurs, to digitize our beliefs, digitize our offerings, digitize our, our data systems, spend that quality uh, thought time to develop those systems so that when you come out of this, you're omnichannel. You've got more capabilities and understandings than you ever had before because you retooled. And so I'm, I'm excited about the future of small business in America. I'm excited about the future of retail. I'm excited for our future, of course. And, and it's just a, it's going to be a, a new generation for sure for creators all over the world, but especially in this country, I think there's just a crazy amount of opportunity. It's easy to look at it like devastation, but the other way to look at it, which I think is, is healthy, is to say, wow, everything is possible now. Landlords who wouldn't have talked to you before will talk to you. Leases that mm -hmm. might've cost double last year or 2019 are gonna cost half. You can access opportunities, resources, business partnerships like never before right now. And, and I think that's, that's the bright side. And that's, I think, what we as a company really wanna focus on and encourage our community and our creators and our network to to think positively and look at all the great things that we're going to do as a country and as a community coming out of this i love that <laughs>